Picture this, a Chinese princess born into a world of upheaval. She wasn't just any princess, she was a Japanese spy, donned military uniforms and rode into the chaos of war. Yes, we're diving deep into the life of Yoshiko Kawashima, a woman often called the Matahari of East Asia, or the Joan of Arc of the Orient. So buckle up for a tale of intrigue, espionage, and a life lived on her own terms. Let's jump into the fascinating world of a Chinese princess turned Japanese spy. Welcome to Asia Obscura. Please like, share, and subscribe for more Asian stories. Now let's rewind the clock to the early 20th century, a time of political turmoil and societal upheaval in China. Enter Yoshiko Kawashima, born in 1907, a member of the Manchu royalty and a descendant of the Qing dynasty. You see, by the time Yoshiko came into the world, the Qing dynasty's grip on power was slipping away. In 1911, the winds of change blew strong as a nationalist revolution toppled a centuries-old dynasty, giving rise to the Republic of China. But Yoshiko's story takes a unique turn. At the age of around 8, she found herself on a one-way ticket to Japan. Not as a tourist, mind you, but as an adopted daughter. Her adoptive parent? None other than Naniwa Kawashima, a close friend of her father. Now imagine being a princess and finding yourself in a completely different cultural landscape. She rejected the traditional roles expected of a woman in that era. No frilly dresses for her, instead she opted for men's clothing, rode horses and to top it off sported a rather unconventional haircut of a woman of her time. So here we have this young audacious princess cross-dressing, riding horses and challenging the norms of gender roles in early 20th century Japan. Picture this. Tokyo in the 1920s, a vibrant era with a young princess navigating a world that seemed to be caught in the crossfire of tradition and modernity. Now, Teenage Rebellion is practically a rite of passage, but Yoshiko took it to a whole new level. She wasn't just attending wild parties, she was practically the life of the party. Her relationships were, let's say, colorful, and her scandalous behavior became the talk of the town. But you know, societal expectations have a way of catching up to you. Enter the arranged marriage card. In 1927, she found herself bound in matrimony with Ganjo Jab, a Mongolian prince. It was one of those meet your future spouse scenarios arranged by adoptive father. Now the twist in this tale, Yoshiko wasn't the type to settle down. The marriage lasted a mere three years before she decided to bid farewell to Ganjo Jab and the vows that seemed to cramp her style. So where does a free-spirited princess go after severing marital ties? Well, she packed her bags. Or maybe she just dramatically walked out. It's Yoshiko we're talking about. And set her sights on the dazzling lights of Shanghai. Stick around for this next part. Now let's shine a spotlight to the early 1930s, a time when geopolitical tensions were simmering and the Japanese Guantan army had its sights set on Manchuria. The plan? Well, it involved a certain, shall we say, unconventional princess. Enter Yoshiko Kawashima, now a key player in the espionage game. General Kenji Doihara saw something in Yoshiko. Maybe it was a daring spirit or her ability to navigate the intricate webs of power. Whatever it was, she found herself on the Japanese intelligence payroll. Shanghai, winter of 1932. Under the guidance of the Japanese officer Rukichi Tanaka, Yoshiko allegedly embarked on a mission to stir up chaos. The goal? To create unrest that would give the Japanese a pretext for solidifying their presence in China. Now this wasn't just about sipping tea and discussing the weather. Yoshiko reportedly went around town, paying workers to stage violent riots and brawls. Now let's fast forward to the mid-30s. Yoshiko Kawashima, still donning her military uniform, had become more than just a spy. She was leading her own army called the Anguo Army. She became the poster girl for the Japanese Kwantung Army. Back in Japan, she was a sensation. But with notoriety comes consequences. As the 1940s rolled in, the Japanese military grew tired of Yoshiko. She was too visible, too outspoken, and frankly a bit too much for their liking. Now my friends, we delve into the dramatic climax of Yoshiko Kawashima's tumultuous life. As the tides of World War II shifted, 
Yoshiko found herself on the wrong side of history. It was October 10, 1945. Chinese troops recaptured Beijing, and the next day the once mysterious Eastern Jewel was in chains. Kaoshima was then arrested and faced a highly publicized trial on charges of treason. The Chinese public, scarred by years of Japanese brutality, clamored for justice, labeling her a race traitor. In a prison cell, Yoshiko insisted that her whole life had been shaped by false gossip, but the court wasn't swayed. The trial echoed with accusations and the Matahari of the East was sentenced to death. Picture this solemn scene on March 25th, 1948. A frost-covered prison courtyard. Yoshiko Kawashima led to her fate. A single shot echoed and she fell. The captivating tale of the cross-dressing princess who once dreamed of restoring the family's glory had come to a tragic end. But wait, the story doesn't end there. Rumors persisted even after death. Some claim to have seen her climbing trees in Changchun as late as 1978. The elusive nature of Yoshiko Kawashima persists even beyond her death, leaving us with even more questions. Was it truly her end in the frost-covered courtyard or did she manage a mysterious escape into the shadows? Let us know what you think in the comments below. Thank you for joining us in this episode of Asia Obscura. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. And if you have your own stories to share or topics you'd like us to explore, feel free to leave a comment. Until next time, stay curious, stay passionate and stay tuned.